Hi there guys and welcome to Sony Gaming. If you enjoyed the video, do remember to hit like and subscribe, drop any questions in the comment section below, and throw a follow over to my live stream at twitch.tv forward slash Sony Gaming. The Companions are a highly anticipated addition to the game, and with the Blackwood expansion, we finally have them. Having an effective and interesting character of the game follow us and help us in our adventures will add an awful lot to the feel of Elder Scrolls Online, and I feel that it will be an incredibly positive addition to the game. Today we're going to be taking a look at the companion system, which will cover how to unlock both Miri and Bastion, what they can do, and how to get the most out of having your companion around. In the near future I'll also be adding various builds for your companions that will make them very useful and effective in whatever role you want them to play, whether this is DPS, tank or healer, all of which they are able to perform. So first, let's take a look at how to get your companions. You'll be starting in Blackwood and you should arrive here next to Leowin, the main city of Blackwood. The first thing to do is navigate to your collection tab and find the new allies category. In here you'll see your previous banker and merchant assistants, but under that we now have a companions tab, and here you'll see both Bastion and Miri, although they aren't unlocked yet. Hover over them and you'll see in red the name of the quest that you need to complete in order to unlock them. All you need to do to start the quest is double click on your companion here in this tab and it will automatically start for you. If you now navigate to the Blackwood map, you'll notice that two new quest markers have appeared, one in the north and one in the south. The north quest marker leads you to Doomvolt Vulpinaz, an ancient Daedric ruin where you can find Miri, our Dunmer Nightblade companion. The south marker leads you to Deep Scorn Hollow, which may sound familiar if you've ever played Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Here you can find Bastion, our Imperial Dragon Knight companion, at the quest marker's location. I won't spoil the quests for you, but they're pretty straightforward, so follow each companion's quest in order to unlock them. So you can only have one companion active at a time, and you can use them in almost all of the content in the game, with the only exceptions being PvP areas or solo arenas. When considering using companions for dungeons and trials however, it's important to note that they do take up a slot in your group tally, so if you have one active, you may be missing out on having a real player active in their place. This can be useful if you do a lot of solo content, like 4-man dungeons, overland or questing, but it can be a hindrance in tougher content like DLC hard mode dungeons or trials. So, now that you've unlocked your companion, what can they do? The first thing to note is that your companion joins you at level 1, and will level up to a maximum of 20 as they adventure with you, and they gain experience with you in the game. As they level up, just like the player character, they will unlock new skills that they can use in combat. But before we look at their skills, first take note of a couple of other features that you can see here in the companion menu. First, the rapport system. You can unlock new dialogue options as you increase or decrease your relationship with them by interacting with the world and by doing companion quests, and you can also unlock additional perks by doing this. Both Bastion and Miri can also become house guests if you complete their quests, and you can unlock a special collectible by earning achievements related to your companion. You can also make use of a special bonus that each companion gives. Miri will grant a 30% chance for extra loot to appear in chests, and Bastion has a 30% chance to increase the quality of potions looted from chests and monsters. Now let's take a look at the skills tab. Bastion and Miri both have three unique class skill lines that they can unlock as they level, that they can use to be more effective in combat. First we'll take a look at Bastion's skills. Bastion is a Dragon Knight and a lot of his skills will look and feel familiar, although they are slightly different from the player Dragon Knight abilities. At the top of the Ardent Warrior section we have Bastion's only ultimate, Unleashed Rage. This builds up power and then lets out a shockwave, damaging and stunning enemies nearby, very useful for mobs. Next we have Fiery Flail, which is an instant damaging skill, Scorching Strike, which serves as a dot effect, and Crag Smash, an instant single target stun. Next we have the Radiating Heart skill line, which has some support abilities in it, including Kindle, which is a heal used when Bastion is under 75% health, Basal Barrier, granting Bastion and allies a shield and increasing their healing received, and Searing Weapons, boosting the damage of Bastion and his allies. Finally, in the Draconic Armor skill line, we have some more support abilities. Blazing Grasp works as a pull against enemies that are more than 10 meters away. Drake's Blood heals Bastion and grants him 20% damage mitigation for 8 seconds, and Crushing Claws works as an AoE immobilize against enemies in the area, holding them in place for 4 seconds and dealing a little bit of damage. Bastion's class skills seem to be geared towards him shining in a support role such as a tank or healer, with plenty of crowd control options, shields, heals, and self-preservation with some support thrown in for nearby friendly players as well. 
Mirror skills are also split into three skill lines, and again, a lot of these skills may look familiar having been designed based on the player Nightblade class. Mirror's only ultimate is Impeccable Shot, which deals massive damage and increases the enemy's damage taken by 20% for 3 seconds, which is great for a huge DPS spike. We also have Shadow Slash, which is Mirror's instant melee attack, Warp Strike, which serves as a gap closer, and Slayer's Blade, which is used when the enemy is below 25% health and acts as an execute ability, dealing massive damage. In the Soul Thief section, Mirror's skills are geared a little bit more towards healing. Life Absorption will deal some damage and heal Miri or an ally for a nice burst of health, and Blood Transfusion will grant a pretty potent heal over time effect to an ally. Life Siphon works the same way as Life Absorption, but in an area around Miri instead of against a single target. Finally, we have the Living Shade section, which is geared a little bit more towards survivability for Miri. Ghostly Evasion, which is used when Miri is below 75% health, will grant 20% damage mitigation for 8 seconds. Mask of Torment is an AoE crowd control tool a little bit like Hysteria, which fears enemies for 4 seconds. And Twilight Mantle will heal Miri and turn her invisible for 3 seconds when she's below 50% health. Each companion can also unlock weapon, armor and guild skills by using the relevant weapon or armor weight in combat or by completing guild quests. There are 6 weapons available, 2 handed, dual wield, bow, destruction staff, restoration staff, and one handed and shield. Each of these skill lines has three unlockable skills in them, which you can use alongside class skills to increase overall effectiveness in the role that you choose for your companion. You can also unlock one active skill and one passive skill in light, medium and heavy armor, which will level as the companion gains experience with those armor weights slotted. A really cool addition to this is that companions can also gain experience in their mage, undaunted and fighters guilds by having them active as you complete quests from those guilds respectively. There are three unlockable skills for each guild and they can be really effective in combat. Finally, each companion gets a small boost through their racial skills, which are increased by simply leveling up. Miri will gain a 3% increase in damage done and healing done, while Bastion will gain a 3% increase to damage done and max health. This implies that both companions are designed to be able to do a little bit of damage, but Miri gains a boost in the healing role and Bastion gains a boost in the tanking role. It's very important to understand that companion skill use differs from player skill use, and looks a little bit more like the skills that any other NPC in the game may use. There is a cooldown on the use of each skill, and some have additional conditions that must be met in order for your companion to activate them, such as companion or enemy health percentage, distance, things like that. If there are none of these factors present, your companion will simply attempt to use their skills in the order that you place them on their bars from left to right. So if you want to increase your companion's effectiveness in combat, try being smart with the order that you place the skills in. Now let's take a look at gearing your companion. Companion gear can be found out and about in the world, in chests and dropped by enemies while your companion is active. This special gear can come with specific traits on them which are different from the traits that you'll find on player gear and go a long way towards boosting the effectiveness of your companion in the role that you choose for them. There are nine different traits available on companion gear. Quicken decreases skill cooldown. Prolific boosts ultimate regen. Focused increases crit chance. Shattering adds extra penetration. Aggressive boosts damage done. Soothing increases healing done. Augmented adds extra duration to ability buffs and debuffs. Bolster reduces damage taken and Vigorous adds max health. You can specialise and make all of your companion's gear one trait if you wish, or you can mix and match depending on what kind of build you're going for. Companion gear isn't all too difficult to find and comes in variable quality levels as well, similar to the gear that you can find for yourself. It does not however have a specific level, so you don't need to get higher level gear as your companion's level increases like new players do. It also cannot be enchanted, you do not need to repair it, and does not have any special style associated with it. So if you get a piece you want on your companion, you don't need to do anything special with it. If you are having any trouble finding higher quality gear from enemies, then remember that you can buy basic versions of companion gear from armorers, leather workers, weaponsmiths, woodworkers and tailors around Tamriel. No player character is complete until they look the part, and the same goes for your companion. Fortunately, you can style your companion however you like. In the companion menu, most costumes or mounts can be applied to Mirio Bastion, and the colour of the costume can be changed at a die station. 
If a costume isn't what you want though, you can use style pages you've already found and apply them to your companion in the die station as well. Unfortunately though, you can't add a headpiece to your companion. So now we're going to be taking a look at an example build for Miri, taking on the role of a healer. This can be really useful for solo content if you want to focus more heavily on damage yourself. The healing that Miri provides is decent and can sustain you pretty well, but don't expect it to match up to having a good player healer or wearing the Ring of the Pale Order with high DPS. Making companions too overpowered would break the game, and right now it feels like the developers have put companions in a good starting place in terms of effectiveness. So to start, Miri is wearing all soothing pieces in light armour and she has a restoration staff equipped. This will boost her overall healing power significantly. Miri is using two strong heal over time effects, Blood Transfusion from the Soul Thief skill line and Reverse Entropy from the Mage's Guild skill line. Next we have Mending Incantation from the Restoration Staff skill line which heals the player and grants them a 7000 physical and spell resistance buff for 8 seconds which is really nice for boosting our survivability. In skill slot 4 we have Mystic Fortress also from the Restoration Staff skill line which Miri will only use if you or she falls below 25% health. This can absolutely save you in a tricky situation as it grants a huge damage shield. Finally, Miri uses the light armor active skill Haste. It's important that this is in the last slot because Miri will use her skills in order and Haste will then reset the cooldown on all of the other skills, meaning she can pump out those heals all the more effectively. There's only one ultimate available for Miri, so just slot in Pegable Shot for an occasional extra bit of damage. This combination of skills will grant a huge amount of healing over time along with some nice buffs, and all of this will have a really nice uptime thanks to the haste skill. Miri will end up being a competent healer capable of maintaining the player through a lot of solo content. And that should be all that you need to know to get up and running with your companions. Check back regularly for updates on the new companion builds which I will be adding alongside my usual builds and walkthroughs. Hope you're all as excited as I am to see the release of the companions into the game. It's going to be a lot of fun and it will absolutely be a positive addition to the feel of the game. Thanks very much guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and drop a follow into my live stream at twitch.tv forward slash Take care guys and have fun.